G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video, we're going to talk about the importance of keeping your oil clean. Why it's so important and why your oil supplier is probably on about it all the time. So let's get an idea for the kind of scale of the problem. Uh, if you remember in our video about film thickness, which I'll link here, we talked about uh, what are approximate film thicknesses for different applications. And in the main, they vary between about 0.1 and 5 microns. To give you an idea of scale, we compared that to human hair, white blood cells, and the upper limit for um, inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy, which is the uh, elemental analysis that you would see on your used oil analysis report. So they can measure up to 8 microns. But this gives us a bit of a flavor for the, the sizes uh, of particles that we're dealing with. And the reason for that is because uh, within the lubricant film, we face the three-body erosion problem. So let's say these surfaces might be two made in gear teeth, or it could be a rolling element um, rolling against a, a bearing race. If we have particles that are of the same order of magnitude as the thickness of the film, then we're going to get issues where it comes into contact with both surfaces, wedges between, and you get load points. Uh, because those load points are such small areas, that induces a lot of surface stress. You get micro pitting, eventually macro pitting and spalling, and it'll lead to uh, an eventual equipment failure. Of course, this is not the only erosion that occurs. You can also have two body erosion where if you have particles that are of much smaller magnitude, they can still impact one of the sides, um, causing erosion and eventually equipment failure. So that gives you a bit of a flavor for the kind of problems that we're dealing with here. And let's kind of dive into a hypothetical example and let's give you an idea for the scale of the problem. So, 18, 16, 13. As an ISO cleanliness code, this isn't actually that bad. This is relatively clean for a lot of the sites that I go to. So don't think I'm taking the, the worst scenario here. But an 18, 16, 13 on the ISO cleanliness scale would be, you know, above four microns, anywhere between 1300 and 2500 particles per milliliter sample. Uh, on the six micron, it's anywhere between uh, 320 and 640. And for the 14 micron, it's between 40 and 80. So if I were just to focus, you know, for simplicity, just on the particles above 4 micron, um, and I'll be generous and say that the particles are only going to be 4 microns in size, and I'll take the average, let's say there's 1,900 of them per mil. All right, so imagine we have a lubricant stream and there are a bunch of particles um, going through, uh, what kind of volume are those particles taking up? Well, let's assume that they're spherical, so volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, uh, but I, we are also saying that there are 1,900 of these in a 1 milliliter sample. All right, radius is very small, so it's 4 microns, um, but that still gives us a volume in the order of, you know, 5 to times 10 to the negative 13. Uh, and keeping in mind that this is in cubic meters because we're working in metric here. All right, so I want to go from mils to liters, so I times by a thousand. So um, this is per liter of sample. And let's say that I have a pump that's pumping out 10 liters a second, right? So the volume of contaminant per second is in this order of magnitude, which means that per minute, per hour, per day, and we get to a final answer of the total volume per year. Now, keeping in mind that this is in cubic meters, so uh, a cubic meter of water is a ton. It's kind of the definition of, of, of a ton. Um, so 0.16 sounds in an absolute sense, to be a very small number. But if this were dirt, and taking the specific gravity of dirt to be around 2.6, that's about 440 kilos going through this bit of equipment 
per year. So if it were a pump that were doing 10 liters a second, you'd have 440 kilos of dirt per year eroding your equipment. So it's a, it's a big problem. And if we were to say, for example, uh, change this number. Let's say, for example, um, our oil got significantly more dirty and it jumped a few ISO codes on the 4 micron limit and it went from, let's say, 18 to 22. Right? Now, that's a pretty big jump. But I have seen plenty of lubricants on site with a 22 uh, ISO count. All of a sudden, that raises our number of particles to an average of 30,000 particles per mil. And that would put the volume throughput of this pump, of the amount of dirt per year, goes up to 2.5 metric, uh, sorry, cubic meters. And that's in the order of about 6.6 tons. So a jump of four isocodes means that you're going from 400 kilos to six tons. Um, and that is, that is a massive problem when it comes to uh, equipment erosion, both three-body erosion and two-body erosion. And what it also presents to us is an opportunity because what that says is if I had an oil which was measured at a 22 ISO code, and I were able to filter it down from a 22 to an 18, I would get that huge improvement in oil life. Um, Sorry, not in oil life, in equipment life. So this is why oil cleanliness is so important. And I highly encourage you to go um, to the Noria website. They've got some really good, what they call life extension tables. They're very easy to use, but let's say, for example, for a hydraulic application, you can look up and say, you know, if my oil is a is a 18, 16, 13, and I were able to clean it up by two ISO codes, what kind of improvement in equipment life can I expect? So really encourage you guys to look up that. All right, um, this has been a pretty quick one today. I hope it was helpful just to give you an idea for um, the reasons behind Um, why oil cleanliness is so important. Uh, I guess this has been Lubrication Explained.